Hey, Sneaky Linux back, and today we're going to install a MacPup Opera 061 to your hard drive. There's a few steps we need to take. So first we go to a System, then we pop up to Gparted. Now what we're going to do, we're going to partition your hard drive. So Gparted opens, and what we basically do is we right click, click on New, and it wants to set a disk label. So basically just click on Create, don't worry about the options, it will do all the work for you, not a problem. Click right, all done. Lovely. So next we right click again and we're going to click new. Now I'm going to leave it as an ext2 extension. You can have ext3 if you want to, but I'm going to leave it as that. But I'm going to resize that partition, basically because I want to leave yourself some swap. So that's about right for me. Lovely. I'm going to right click again, click on new, but this time on the other part, I'm going to put it as a swap partition. We're going to click Add, and then Apply. It's going to ask us again, do we really want to do it? Of course we do. Click Apply. G Partage, which means known partition, of course. We'll do its little work. This is from the live CD, by the way. And off we go. It takes a little while. It all depends on your system. Don't forget that. If you've got an old system, it's going to take a long while. If you've got a new one, it'll take seconds. All depends on what you got. So as you can see, it's creating the swap partition now. We're going to close that, because it's all done. There you go, it will search one more time for us. And there we are, we've got our two partitions done for us. We're going to come out of there. And then we're going to go back all the way down to the menu again. And we'll go back to Applications. And this time we're going to Setup. And we're going to set the Puppy Universal Installer. So you click there. Now I'm using a real hard drive, so we click there again and click OK. Now that's my hard disk. Looks good to me. Click OK again. Takes a little while sometimes. It's not a new system I'm using, it's quite old actually. It's about five years old, so expect a bit of slowness to say the least. Right, that's where I want to install it. Click on the menu and we wait for the next box to come up. Yes, of course that's the box we want, and that's the partition I want to install it on. Where are the files? Well, they're on the CD, so I'll click CD. Yeah, it thinks about it. Yep, that's where my CD is. I'm going to click OK and just go ahead. Oh yeah. Takes a little longer again. Remember, we're running from a live CD, so don't worry about it too much. Now you get two options here. You get a frugal install or a full. Now, I'm going for a full. I always do... That's just me. You can do frugal. I might do a video on frugal soon. Let's see how I feel, shall we? If I've got the energy. Now, basically now, all it's doing is copying over all the files that it needs to run from the hard drive. So that's the first lot done. Now you have to wait a little while now because it wants to add some more files. There we go. Run all the update scripts. Takes a little bit longer. I know it's quite boring this video really, but it shows you exactly how to install it to your hard drive and you should have no problem, especially if you're using the XT2 extension. Sometimes with XT3 it won't load. You just go a bit from hard drive and it won't have it, it don't want to know. So anyway, we want to install Grub, we click on install. Of course we want to do it, click OK, but read it first of course, because it wants to go to the MBR, but you'll see more as we go along. Automatically is good for me. I use the basic one. It saves a lot of problems. Click OK. Off we go. Is that where we want Grub to go? Of course it is. That's our main partition. So I'm going to click OK again. It does a bit more work. It's working. It just told me it's working. Now it wants to go to the MBR, the master boot record. We really need it to go there. So make sure you do that. Don't worry about the others. It's creating the menu and it's installing Grub. It's pretty quick really, isn't it? I thought it would be a bit longer, because it's quite an old one I'm using it on tonight. And there we go, we're all done basically. We don't want to re redo it, do we? So no, we're just going to click no. And basically that's how you do it. Now when you shut down, which I want to lock here, you're going to click shut down. It will ask you, do you want to save? Now you don't want to save anything. Just make sure you boot from the hard drive at the next boot, and you're good to go. So that's Sneaky Linux out. Sponsored by Cider and Beer. Thank you very much. Bye bye.